Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up in our news tonight, the government eyeing some 50 acres for service lot development on Eleuthera. Would Bahamians be open to Chinese vaccines? A former health minister weighs in. Plus, the FNM chairman says the government accomplished a lot. Welcome to our News Weekend Edition and thanks for joining us. I'm Georgie O'Bain. Topping news tonight. The government has identified 50 acres of land for the service lot development on Eleuthera, according to Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis. The development is a part of the government's land initiative that offers ready-to-build lots starting at around $15,000 on New Providence and around $10,000 on Family Islands, as well as duty-free concessions for building materials. Provisions will also be made for the development of preschools in those communities. The Prime Minister made the announcement on Friday at a ceremony for the official opening of the refurbishment of the main government dock and fisherman's dock in Rock Sound. A well, man is dead after he collapsed during his morning exercise in eastern New Providence this morning. According to police reports, shortly after 8 a.m., a man was jogging on Jasmine Drive in Winton Meadows when he collapsed. Emergency medical services arrived on the scene and rendered assistance. However, he was pronounced dead. Police are awaiting an autopsy to determine his cause of death. Well, Pan American Health Organization and World Health Organization representative to the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands, Dr. Eldana Basson, weighing in on the Bahamas' handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. The country has recorded over 13,000 cases and 273 deaths. However, Basson says it would be a lot worse. It could what we've be been a seeing happening worse. in the Bahamas is not any different to what we've been seeing in other places. When I say that, as it pertains to having some periods where you have a surge or what we call a wave these days, and then some periods where you find the numbers have gone down. What has been positive in my mind in the Bahamas here is that this third wave has not been as severe as the previous two waves. Um, in many other countries, we've not seen that. In many other countries, the third wave has actually been a lot worse. The healthcare system has also had to adjust its operations as cases climbed. According to Bassan, the situation was not unique to the Bahamas, but the response to the escalating cases was a determining factor. Testing seems to be ongoing, and I see notification that even though the public health lab has had to halt testing for a while, that they've made provisions for testing to take place in other places. I've also seen where there's been uh, some outbreaks occurring in family islands and I've seen immediate response. Sometimes PAHO has assisted in that response to quickly ring fence the cases and shut those outbreaks down. And as the country's number one industry begins to rebound, Bosson was asked if this could have a negative impact on the process being made by the country. Now we're at a very interesting time. I see that tourism is picking up. I, I can see that for myself as I walk through the streets and I hear the Minister of Tourism speaking about that. And so far we've not been seeing any huge increase and certainly we'll be watching this space, but I think that's also a very positive thing. It means that there must be, I imagine, a level of confidence amongst the tourists who are coming here. Well, days after Minister of Health Renwood Wells revealed that the state of emergency will end next month, Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Davis says it appears that the Prime Minister is more concerned about election campaigning than public health. We have to understand that we have a health crisis. Um, and what are we facing with this health crisis? PMH, which is full, at capacity, for COVID cases. We have a shortage of nurses. Doctors are telling us they are seeing serious COVID cases in children. The Delta variant of the virus is what someone has said, the, the medical profession said, is 250% more transmissible than the original virus. All right, we, we are a country, we as a country, we are far behind most of these regions vaccinations. 
The Bahamas has been under a state of emergency since March 2020. Davis says he does not have enough information to say for certain whether he agrees with the decision to end the state of emergency. However, he added there de that there does not seem to be a plan in place. When the state of emergency falls away on the 13th of August, all the measures fall away from the 13th of August, what then is next in place? Right. There's, not, there's not been sufficient public education, I think, to get people to understand the taking of the vaccine and what, what it does and means. Um, it's just a total collapse of, of what I call relationship between the government and its people. Former Health Minister Dr. Duane Sands fears that Bahamas may reject a COVID-19 vaccine made in China or Russia due to brand consciousness. The Bahamas is running low on vaccine stocks and Sands was asked whether the numbers could may be made up with the center form out of Beijing. There has been great consternation over the use of AstraZeneca products produced by reputable pharmaceutical companies in India as compared to uh, production facilities elsewhere. Bahamians want Pfizer, they want Moderna, they want AstraZeneca. They are less enamored with Sputnik V or Sinopharm. The government of Trinidad and Tobago recently acquired 800,000 doses of Sinopharm for its citizens. But Sands predicts that if Sinopharm was ordered in the Bahamas, that the uptake would be slim to none. He noted that the efficiency wasn't strong as other vaccines either. Objectively, when we look at the performance of the Sinopharm or the, uh, to use a, a colloquialism, uh, the Chinese vaccines, they have not performed as well as a number of the other vaccines. And the penetrance in the international market has certainly not been anywhere near as extensive. AstraZeneca leads the world. Uh, Pfizer uh, is probably second in terms of penetrance around the world. Uh, Moderna comes in after that. Johnson & Johnson is behind that. Well, still to come on our news weekend, the vaccine committee co-chair says there's no need to panic over dwindling doses, plus exploring a non-surgical option for a routine procedure. That and much more. Stay with us. Are you okay? Uh, no. Yeah, I got it, I got it. That, 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 that's supposed to happen. Listen, listen. Listen, wait, wait, wait. Where's your heart? Where is your compassion? Do you have a soul? Hey Jimbo, clear my schedule for the rest of the day, eh? Good evening, boy. What do you know, boy? And what are the chances we can actually operate on the patient? Come on, man. Surgery will begin in all 2300 hours, okay? So, we do our rampus, right? On the track, T on the mic. Okay. First, I was in the horn, then I on the mic. Oh. I tell her off one back, oh. she holding on my back. Oh. I chew the wide box, straight back, 12 o'clock. Oh. Too much girls to choose from, like any, many, mighty more. <laughs> You're watching our news. Welcome back. Co-chair of the National COVID-19 Vaccine Consultative Committee, Ed Fields, is insisting that there is no need to panic over the current shortage of COVID-19 vaccines in country. Fields made the comments while discussing the issue on his KISS 96 talk show, Ed Fields Live. I don't think there's any need to panic. I think what people need to understand is, one, this is not anything that most of the developing countries can control. The committee announced the suspension of first doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine until the arrival of additional doses in the Bahamas. The administration of second doses continues at Loyola Hall Vaccination Center by appointment only. The Bahamas is scheduled to receive 33,600 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine this month through the COVAX facility. No reason at this point to believe there will be a delay because things like purchase orders and things have been processed. So, yeah, it might be a day or two. I don't know. But there's not going to be any lengthy period of time. 
Well, Free National Movement Chairman Carl Kummer asserting that the party has done a lot more in four years than previous governments, despite what he called setbacks from Hurricanes Dorian and Irma and the COVID-19 pandemic. Kummer insisted that the Minnesota administration has a lot to campaign on. Well, we came in, uh, the, a hurricane came in and uh, we had to bring all the folks from the Southeast Islands. Um, the, then there was Hurricane Durin, where we had to bring all the folks from the, 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 the Northern Bahamas. And then we had the world pandemic. A lot of people is going asking, where the money? Where's the money? Well, you can see when you look around, um, the monies were spent and, and accounted for. We brought in the, a bill where uh, the, um, the government must account to the people and we delivered on uh, many reports, financial reports, on how the money was spent. There is widespread speculation that an early election may be called and the FNM ratified its final four candidates on Thursday, completing its full election slate. Culmer says since being elected, the party has been working to make things happen for Bahamians. We started working from day one. We, we, we um, came in when, when the um, country was in dire straits with financing. We was able to get the finances back up, um, get the country uh, where investors look at the country in a positive light. Well, one of the most subscribed surgeries in the Bahamas is the removal of uterine fibroids. Chances are you or someone you know has been diagnosed with fibroids. But now a non-surgical option is available locally. Our Christina Dragovich reports. And everybody wants to, to be cut. Mm -hmm. Not everybody wants to have the recovery or the incisions associated with surgery um, and there are other ways to do it. Interventional radiologist Dr. Mikhail Higgins specializes in what he calls inside jobs. You know we are um, essentially the individuals that work from the inside of your body to care for things. Um, we go through little tiny blood vessels and we navigate our way to the organs of interest um, in order to treat and solve the problem um, that may be ailing that individual. Higgins, the first Bahamian board-certified fellowship-trained interventional radiologist, recently brought his expertise back to the Bahamas, working with the Family Medicine Center to bring high-demand treatments home. Not everybody wants to, ha to be cut. Mm -hmm. Not everybody wants to have the recovery or the incisions associated with surgery um, and there are other ways to do it. We deal with everything from essentially, um, you know, from, from head to your toe. Locally, fibroids and enlarged prostate issues were treated with surgery or abroad for non-surgical options. In the Bahamas, there are many people that have to leave the country depending on what it is they want. And so for me, selfishly, I want my family members, my, my friends, you know, my cousins, um, my loved ones to have access to care that I feel that they should have. So For more information on the types of IR procedures now available in the Bahamas, visit FamilyMedicineCenter.org. Reporting for Our News, I'm Christina Dragovich. Well, when Our News comes back from the break, the NTC follows up on those payments of those former Atlantis employees. Plus, an event planner is, has pivoted during the pandemic and shares the details. All of that and much more after the break. Stay with us. Ah. Are you okay? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I got it, I got it. That, 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 that's supposed to happen. Listen, listen. Listen, wait a minute. Where, where's your heart? Where is your compassion? Do you have a soul? Hey Jimbo, clear my schedule for the rest of the day, eh? Good evening, boy. Where you go? And what are the chances we can actually operate on the patient? Come on, man! Surgery will begin in all 2300 hours, okay? So, we do a rapus, right? These yeah, rapus, yeah, yeah. man. Silly girls, pretty girls, ghetto girls, pretty girls, kind girls, kind of girls, yeah, we got all kind of girls. Tea on the track. On the mic. Okay. First, I was in the horn, then I on the bike. I tell a hop on back, she holding on my back. I chew the wide box, straight back, 12 o'clock. Too much girls to choose from, like any, many, mighty more. You're watching our news weekend. Thanks for staying with us. Chairman of the National Tripartite Council, Robert Farkasen, says the council plans to follow up on the process of those payments to 700 Atlantis employees who were made redundant back in May. That's a violation of Section 27 of the um, Employment Act. 
Section 27 of the Employment Act, 2007 Amendment Act, makes revisions that redundancy payments should be made at the time of redundancy. So when Atlantis um, took the decision to um, not pay those employees at the time of redundancy, they were in violation of the law. Um, now, no collective bargaining agreement, no agreement between the union and employer could alter the terms and conditions of the Employment Act. As unemployment and food assistance programs near the end, he says it's imperative for former employees to receive full payment. Those employees should have been paid, redundancy pay at the time of redundancy. And so I'm hoping that um, the representatives of Atlantis can quickly make the adjustments to have um, those employees paid and follow the laws of the Bahamas. Farkasen added that he has encouraged Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union President Darren Woods to meet with Atlanta's executives again before further steps are taken. I have spoken to um, Mr. Darren Woods, the president of the Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union, who has bargaining rights for employees at Atlantis, and I would have given him my, my views. I would have pointed out what the law says, and I would have encouraged him to go to the bargaining table armed with the law and try to persuade Atlantis to follow the law. Um, failure to follow the law. He has some steps what he can take um, um, under um, the law to protect his members. So I'm not sure what has been done, but I'm sure he is aware of the situation regarding Section 27 of the 2017 Employment Amendment Act. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic resulted in the cancellation of many events, bringing many event planning businesses to a complete halt. In this edition of Grand Bahama in Focus, Jillian Gray spoke with a Grand Bahama business owner who shared how she had to pivot during the pandemic. From backyard parties to corporate events, Grand Bahama native Davinia Rutherford is carving out a niche for herself in event management. Well, I love being able to solve and figure out a problem, being able to make things happen. I've been blessed, I guess, with clients that don't like to hear the word no. So it has forced me to think outside the box and get things done. One of the things that I love about doing event management is seeing the look on my client's face when their vision comes to life. I always tell people I don't have events, I create experiences. From the moment your guests walk through the doors till they leave, they remember so many details that they will be talking about your event five years from now. Minding your business has been in existence for more than seven years, but Rutherford says the pandemic presented more challenges than they'd ever imagined. From canceled corporate events to postponed weddings, Rutherford says the pandemic taught her how to pivot. The most emotional ones are weddings because, you know, in weddings, things are paid for well in advance. Certain things you can adjust, certain things you can move. But in the case of flowers being bought and shipped to the island, that's a lost cost. If food was already purchased, depending on if it was perishable or not, that's also a lost cost. So we've had several clients that have lost several thousands of dollars in reference to having to cancel or postpone. With adversity comes the opportunity to grow. After adjusting their model, Rutherford says they found a way to make virtual and physically distant events memorable. Okay. I got to work with Rick Ross. That was exciting. And then my favorite event for 2021 had to be Mercy Corp. That was my that was my company's biggest event. It was a graduating ceremony for their grantees. It was a drive through. We had to create several elements. We had to be very smart about it because we didn't want the guests to have to come out of the car. So we created a life size photo booth. And as the cars drove past, they were able to roll down, down their windows and still get their pictures taken with the Mercy Corp branding. Everybody was safe. Everybody had fun. Even in a COVID environment, Rutherford says beautiful memories can still be made. Stay encouraged. Be creative. Events can still happen under the guidelines. Follow the rules so that we can all stay safe. Nobody wants to catch COVID. Everybody wants to be safe. So let's find safe, creative ways to still have events and create memories. Reporting for Our News Weekend, I'm Jillian Gray. Well, big plans are on the way for Farmers Hill Park. That and much more coming up, so stay with us. Odette Carey Russell, Director of Products at Rev. We're accustomed, obviously, with using multiple devices in our home, but we're always, you know, either downloading or streaming things. And when you're talking about fiber, you're actually talking about speeds that are 10 times your regular cable internet services. Say, for example, you're downloading a two-hour HD movie. If you were to download a two-hour HD movie on DSL, it would take you 60 minutes. 
If you were to do it on cable internet, it'll be about 12 minutes. But if you did it on fiber, it'll be 1.2 minutes. And so speed is definitely one of the big selling points when you're talking about fiber. We know power outages are pretty common. But if you have a power outage, the reality is if you have fiber, it's not susceptible to also being out as well. So the, the, the reliability in the sense of having fi fiber through a power outage, you would still have continued services as long as you have a generator that resides within your home. So those are some of the great benefits of fiber, reliability, speed, consistency, it's just robust. Welcome back to our news. Thanks for staying with us. Farmers Hill Public Park on Exuma is being completely transformed for the enjoyment of Crystal Cruises passengers. Charmaine DeVoe of the Ministry of Tourism says that they have big plans for the park. We have our bathrooms upgraded. We have we have a beautiful pavilion that we hope to have persons uh, sit down and use as a lounge area. We have a beautiful boardwalk that has been uh, constructed that leads all the way out to the beach. And this wonderful area is going to house our artisans, food vendors, and also beverage vendors. Island Administrator Deborah Moxie Roll says that she is excited for the endless possibilities in store for Exumians. Thankful for the opportunity and thankful to Crystal Cruise Lines along with the Exuma District Council and all of the other partners who have gone above and beyond to ensure that we have the facilities here ready and welcoming for the people. I want to encourage Exomians, those who may not have um, taken advantage of, we still have a few slots left um, for vendors, craft, artisans, and this is a perfect opportunity to showcase your talent because you, we are known for not only our beauty, but for our people, our people skills. DeVoe pointed out that while Crystal Cruises' inaugural visit is over, it's not too late for other residents to get involved. A little note out there to Exomians, if we have any interested persons, you can still reach out to us at the Ministry of Tourism, 336-2430, uh, to be added to our vendors list. Uh, this is a, a great opportunity for Exoma, and we are looking forward to, to Exomians coming out and being a part of this. And on behalf of the entire RTV team, we'd like to extend congratulations to this week's winner of the True True Bahamian Treasure Hunt. Well, thank you so much for joining us on behalf of the entire team. I'm Georgie O'Bain, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.